Throughout most of human history, we have felt at war with microbes. However, the human body is colonized by a vast number of microbial population, known as the human microbiome. Trillions of bacteria colonize our bodies. We can find them in various locations, such as our throat, our gut, and even our skin. In a healthy adult human body, there are approximately 10 times more bacteria than there are human cells. Humans and their microbiota, which is bacteria, have a symbiotic and mutualistic relationship, which means that us humans and the bacteria work together, work with each other, benefit off each other, and depend on each other for survival. There is a growing number of research into the field of the human microbiota. For example, the association between the gut microbiota and our health. It's an ongoing research and new insight on the mutualistic symbiotic relationship are emerging rapidly. Most of these studies and research are based on in vitro studies as well as animal studies. Another important terminology we should learn is the microbiome, which essentially means a community of bacteria. So for example, if I say the human oral microbiome, it means the community of microbes or bacteria that live within our oral cavity. In this video, we will investigate and focus on the bacteria that live in our gut. When we talk about the community of bacteria that reside in our gut, we can refer to them as the human gut microbiome. We will first learn about what they are and what's and some interesting facts about them. And then we will look into the effects they have on the human body, which is, as I mentioned, an exciting and relatively new field of research. So we begin here with the digestive tract. Looking at the digestive tract, which is made up of the esophagus, stomach, small intestine, and large intestine, these microorganisms are mostly found in the large intestine. Though it is important to understand that we do find these bacteria also in the small intestine, just not as much. So let us recap the regions of the large intestine. Here is a small intestine that, jo that joins with the large intestine. The large intestine is made up of the cecum, the ascending colon, the transverse colon, the descending colon, zygmunt colon, and rectum. We also have the appendix that joins with the cecum. You might be thinking though, if bacteria are inside our body, wouldn't it initiate some form of immune response? Well, that is true, but the digestive tract, as well as other tracts, are special in that it contains mucus, for example. So if we zoom into the large intestine here, we have the lumen of the large intestine. And here are the colon cells. Above the colon cells, we have mucus, which acts as a barrier between the microbe community within the lumen and the human cells. The highly dense microbial community and the host intestinal cell linings are separated by a thick layer of mucus in the large intestine. Interestingly, if we compare this to the small intestine, the small intestine and the microbes are only separated by a thin layer of mucus, much thinner compared to the mucus layer of the large intestine. Therefore, we can see how that mucus helps keep these bacteria from causing any harm. Also, the antibodies that are part of the mucosal system, as well as the tight junctions between the intestinal cells, help in this respect. So there is a lot of barrier here, allowing these bacteria to live um, within us in a symbiotic mutualistic relationship. So why do we have it? Why do we have these bacteria living in our gut? Well, the gut microbiota become established at birth and continue to change in composition throughout development. In fact, many factors influence the amount of mi microbes we have inside our body. 
such as taking medications, diet and lifestyle. All are factors that influence the composition, the amount and the different types of microbes we have. And therefore, each individual is unique in that each individual has a unique um, amount, composition of microbes. In the large intestine, the bacteria are mainly found in the proximal colon because this is where substrate availability is highest. But there are still so much bacteria everywhere else, such as the transverse colon as well as the descending colon. And so we can say that the bacterial density will increase from the duodenum of the small intestine to the large intestine. We find especially a lot of bacteria in the proximal colon. As well with this increase in density, there is also an increase in bacterial diversity. So there are more bacterial species as we move towards the end of the colon. With the increase in bacterial diversity and density, there is also an increase in mucus thickness. Now the normal gut microbiota is dominated by anaerobic bacteria, but there are some aerobic and facultative anaerobic bacteria that are found in the intestine. In total, there are up to 1,000 species of bacteria living in our gut that interestingly only belong to a few known bacterial species. The most abundant bacteria come from the phyla Firmicutes and Bacteroidetes. Our gut microbiota play many fundamental roles in our body. Let us learn a bit about the effects the gut bacteria have on the host physiology. The main impact gut microbes have on host physiology is on metabolism. The gut microbiota has been shown to help absorb nutrients. But the main effect on metabolism is that the gut microbiota have a big role in fermentation. You see, foods that are not digested and absorbed in the small intestine, such as non-digestible carbohydrates, will reach the large intestine. And here, the carbohydrate will undergo fermentation by the bacteria. So let us have a closer look at this process. So here we have the colonocytes with mucus on top. And here is the blood supply. Within the lumen of the colon, we find the bacteria communities waiting for food to come. The non-digestible carbohydrate particles will reach the colon and will be then fermented by the bacteria. Through this fermentation process, the bacteria will produce a byproduct, a substance known as short chain fatty acids. Some of these short chain fatty acids, such as butyrate, are used as energy by the colon cells. Up to 70% of the energy used by colon cells come from short chain fatty acids. Short chain fatty acids that are absorbed into the blood can have other effects around the body. There is some in evidence that short-chain fatty acids will influence adiposity by increasing lipogenesis. The short-chain fatty fat. acids have also shown to influence the immune system in many ways, as well as they have been shown to play a key role in the health of colon cells. Another fundamental effect the gut microbiota play in our body is its effect on gut morphology, so gut structure. These effects include increasing the amount of mucus in the intestinal tract, decreasing intestinal cell permeability, deepening the crypts of the intestine, increase vascular flow, and stimulate tissue repair and renewal, particularly the villi. All of these effects essentially will promote barrier integrity, as well as the function of the digestive system. The reason as to how the gut microbiota modulate most of these activities remains elusive, but most of the research suggests that it is attributed to the production of the short-chain fatty acids following fermentation of non-digestible foods.
The gut microbiota has also shown to have effect on the immune system. For example, it has shown to influence the maturation and development of lymphoid tissues, such as payas patches in the mucosal system, as well as the lymph nodes. The gut microbes are also able to regulate production of some immune mediators, including increasing concentration of secretory IgA antibodies. Recently, it has been found that the bacteria are able to influence the composition of T cells in the lamina propria. The gut microbiome also has effects on the nervous system. Most of these effects are based on animal studies and include decreasing synaptic connectivity and promoting anxiety-like behaviors as well as pain perception. There is also suggestions that the gut microbiota influences bone homeostasis by regulating bone density, as well as increasing the reabsorption of calcium from the gut. Now we're still only scratching the surface of our understanding of gut microbes and how they affect our health. It is an ongoing and exciting field of research. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.